Hey guys and gals, welcome to a special edition of Mr. Schaefer's Daily History Cast. In this podcast, we're going to look at one very specific, very important part of history. We'll get back to this day in history in our next podcast. This is Mr. Schaefer from the History Department, and today is June 19th, 2012. In this special edition of the History Cast, we're going to talk about the Cuban Missile Crisis. Let's jump on in and learn about the closest our country has ever come to all-out nuclear war. Let's set the stage. It is 1962. President John F. Kennedy is in charge of the armed forces of the United States as Commander-in-Chief. In the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev is the premier and leaving the country through a number of Cold War conflicts. Meanwhile, Fidel Castro is Prime Minister of Communist-controlled Cuba, which sits only 90 miles off the coast of the United States. Cuba was allied with the Soviet Union, and the United States did not like this. With that in mind, the U.S. tried many different times to overthrow Castro's regime. The communists were not amused. In August of 1962, the Soviet Union and the communist government of Cuba began to secretly build bases in Cuba that could launch medium and intermediate range ballistic missiles. These missiles could hit almost anywhere in the United States and carry a payload of nuclear weapons. If you look at the picture, you can see that Washington, D.C. was well within the range as well as Oak Ridge and Knoxville. It wasn't until October 14th that a U-2 spy plane sent by the United States was able to take pictures of these secret bases and reveal the presence of these missiles to the United States military. This began what would become known as the Cuban Missile Crisis. Kennedy and his administration considered all options when it came to the bases. Military options, such as airstrikes and invasions, were all on the table. It would likely lead to nuclear holocaust or World War III. To try and minimize the risk of World War, Kennedy opted for a naval blockade of Cuba. At the same time, it was announced that the United States would not allow offensive weapons, like the missiles, to be delivered to Cuba, and that the missile bases must be destroyed. Let's watch and listen to Kennedy's official address from the time period. Good evening, my fellow citizens. This government, as promised, has maintained the closest surveillance of the Soviet military buildup on the island of Cuba. Within the past week, Unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. The purpose of these bases can be none other than to provide a nuclear strike capability against the Western Hemisphere. Despite this measured response, Khrushchev responded to Kennedy's blockade by calling it, and I quote, an act of aggression propelling humankind into the abyss of a world nuclear missile war. Soviet ships were then told to ignore the blockade. The United States and the Soviet Union were in a staring contest, and neither side looked like it would blink any time soon. After numerous close calls, the Soviet Union and the United States came to an agreement through secret channels not known to the public. Khrushchev agreed to dismantle the missile sites and remove the Soviet weapons from Cuba but only if Kennedy agreed to promise that the United States would never again try to invade Cuba. The ploy worked, and the crisis came to an end. But, secretly, Kennedy had also agreed to remove a set of Jupiter missiles from Turkey and Italy. Thanks to these backroom deals, the threat of nuclear holocaust was avoided once again. Well, that's all the time we have for today, kids. I hope you've enjoyed our time with the Cuban Missile Crisis. If you like the topic, be sure to look into other events like the Bay of Pigs Invasion and Operation Mongoose. Thanks for listening to this special edition of Mr. Schaefer's History Cast. Be sure to tune in next time when we cover This Day in History for June 25th.